Hello everyone, my name is Griffin Swanson from Professional Advantage. I'm the channel product manager for Company Data Archive, and we're going to be taking you through an archiving demonstration here today. So we're going to kick it off here with a PowerPoint, and then we'll hop into GP, showing you the actual archiving process, as well as a few additional features that come with the product. So let's get started. So first off here, what I'd like to do is actually go through some of the background information or history of Company Data Archive itself. We do develop the product in-house here at Professional Advantage, and we've done that for quite some time. You can see there we've had close to 1,000 installs of the product over time. And with those 1,000 installs, we're really seeing it used on a wide variety of database sizes. And so we have some customers using our product here today when we have 1 to 2 gigabytes of data. But then we have some extremely large customers using our product who have close to one terabyte of data. So again, just a wide variety of different customers using the product with those 1,000 installs. Now some of the benefits to archiving your data. The main benefit first and foremost, it is going to streamline your database. Now that's going to reduce the clutter in the inquiries and reports that you have in GP. And as you know, you can put a lot of date ranges on those reports, but you can still end up with a lot of noise that's going to restrict your users from viewing the useful data. So Company Data Archive, it gets rid of that clutter, it streamlines your database, and that allows your users to make faster and better decisions inside of GP. Now hand in hand with streamlining that data there, Company Data Archive is also going to increase your processing performance. Specifically, you'll see the performance improvements in your lookups, reports, inquiries, and smart lists inside of GP. If you think about it from a SQL perspective, if that's scanning through millions on millions of rows, from temporary tables that it generates, that's going to take some time. For example, Company Data Archive would take a table with, let's say, 4 million rows. It's going to cut that down to about half of those rows, and then we would see performance improvements in GP after performing that archive. Next benefit there is faster upgrades. So if you have a large database with your live company, that is going to take some time to upgrade. However, if you were to archive before an upgrade, in turn shrinking your live database, you'll see that upgrade go much faster, leaving you the option to upgrade your historical database at your leisure or downtime. And then the last point there, optimizing disk space. As your database gets bigger, it is gonna be taking up more disk space, and that takes SQL longer and longer to run the backup and restore processes. So Company Data Archive is gonna shrink the live database, taking up less disk space, and then we've seen companies move their archive database onto different drives that are running on less optimal hardware, leaving their live company to their higher performing hardware. So as I mentioned, they're pretty short and sweet PowerPoint. Let's go ahead and hop into GP at this time. All right, so hopping into GP here, just a few notes before we start diving into the features. The first thing I wanna mention is I'm actually logged into my archive company right now. So if you look here in the bottom left-hand corner of GP, you can see I'm logged into this archive company. This is just another standard company in GP. So users will be able to access this data just like they would any other company. They can come in here and run similar reports, inquiries, and smart lists, just like you would in a live company. Now, typically what we see our customers do is they'll leave two to five years of data in their live company, and then they'll move everything else into the archive company during their first initial archive. One of the great things about this product is that you can actually keep adding to the same archive company over time. So after you perform that first initial archive, we'll see companies run an annual, semi-annual, or even a monthly archive. That way your historical data is located in one spot. Last note here is that the tool's logic for archiving is broken down into two main pieces. Number one, it only allows you to archive historical or fully applied data. And number two, all related documents in the apply chain must fall after your cutoff date for those to be archived. And I'll show everyone where that cutoff date resides in the archiving window here today. Let's take a look at the product here though. So the first thing I wanna show you guys is this feature called data distribution and sizes. So what this allows us to do here is calculate the number of years that we've been on GP and see the disk space involved with each year. So I'm just gonna calculate the last five years here. Now do bear with me, everybody. This is my demoing data, so I don't actually have a lot of customer information inside of here. But as you can see, it's gonna break down each year that you've calculated, showing the disk space involved with each year. Now the cool thing about this, you can actually break down each year, showing the actual modules that our product will archive, and then you can even go one step further showing the actual row counts of those tables that the product will archive as well. Now to get a more visual representation of this to see what you should be archiving, you can actually export this data into Excel. 
and I've done that here with some customer data today. So as you can see for this customer, their data was growing exponentially by year. It made sense for them to archive their general ledger data, their receivables management, sales order processing, and maybe some inventory. So the product's gonna let you choose which modules you want to archive and their cutoff dates. So for example, let's say you wanna keep five years of general ledger data in your live company, but only need to keep two years of receivables data. You can slice it that way and the product really gives you a lot of flexibility there. And now I'm gonna show you that in the actual archiving window. So let's hop into the archiving window here. So here's the archiving window itself. Now running this process and kicking it off is pretty straightforward. I do wanna run through all the fields that we have inside of this window here. And then I have two additional features that I wanna to touch on as soon as I wrap up with this called company data archive registration and company data archive schedule. So just keep in mind once I wrap up with the archiving window, I'm gonna be drilling directly back into those features. Starting at the top of the archive window, we have what we call the destination company. That is gonna be the archive company where all of your data is transferred to. Now, if you notice here, that's just matching up with the archive company that I'm currently logged into. Next thing we'll look up then is the originating company. That's gonna be your live production company where all of that data is coming from. So then once you have both of those companies selected, you're then gonna specify that archive date that I previously mentioned. So let me go ahead and do that. So everything previous to this date here then is gonna be subject to archive as long as it's in the history tables. Now you see here we can choose to archive by the document date or the GL posting date. We see most companies use the GL posting date, but if you go off of more of a calendar date, we will see some companies use the document date. The GL posting date is for companies that are GL centric posting in their fiscal period. Now below that we have the option here to print a detailed report. So this is not required, but it's certainly recommended. This is gonna give you reports of data that came across during that archive, as well as reports of data that did not come across, or perhaps it wasn't fully applied. Now you can see here, we can save this into a specific folder, putting those reports in the same area over time. Now off to the left-hand side of the window here, here are the core GP modules that we get to archive. You notice we have a transfer and remove column that essentially gives us three options when running this archive process. So by far the most common practice is to have both columns selected. It's the most general sense of archiving. What we're doing is we're transferring that data from our live company into the archive company and then deleting or removing that data out of your live company. Second option we have here, run a transfer only. So that's just gonna make a copy of the data from your live company into the archive company. Now some of you might be sitting there wondering, okay, well, why would anybody wanna do that? We do see customers do this as a verification process. So what I mean by that is you could run a transfer only, go into your archive company, make sure that everything you've transferred was brought across successfully, and then come back in, run that transfer and remove. It is not gonna duplicate that data the second time you run a transfer. Again, it's just verifying that it's already in the archive company, and then it deletes or removes that data out of your live company. Now the third and final option we have here, run or remove only. But as you can see by default, we are not allowing you to do that. Now for obvious reasons, right? We don't want customers coming in and using this product to just purely delete or purge their data. However, in this registration window that we're gonna drill into here in a little bit, there is a checkbox option in there that would allow you to purely delete or remove data without transferring it first. So I'll go into more detail as to why once we get into that registration window, but again, just know by default, we do not allow you to do that. Now, a couple of other options we have here in the archiving window, we have the option to transfer master data. Master data would be anything under the cards or setup menus in GP. So that include your address IDs, shipping methods, tax detail, really that core customer vendor information. You will want to transfer this master data the first time you perform an archive. But once it's been copied across, we understand that this information here isn't changing nearly as often as your transactional data, so rather than copying it across every time you perform an archive, it is optional to save you time. Now underneath that, we also have the option here to transfer user defined tables. So basically, if you wanna copy something across to your archive company that doesn't reside in these core GP tables here, you can use this option. So this allows you to enter the exact SQL table name one by one, 
Or as you can see there, there's a little asterisk character there that's acting as a wildcard field. So all the tables in your live company that begin with these characters, they will be subject to archive for you. However, there are two restrictions if you plan on using this option. Number one, it is not date specific. So regardless of the cutoff date that you entered here, it is gonna copy everything inside of these tables here. The other restriction is that it does not delete or remove any of that data. It's simply transferring it into the archive company. So keep those in mind. You know, a lot of times we're not seeing huge amounts of data in our customers' third-party tables. So generally customers aren't too worried about that. However, we do have a handful of customers that do want to be able to remove third-party data. So as you can see, everyone, I am demonstrating our company data archive professional version for you today. Below that, we have an add-on module called CDA Plus. CDA Plus was designed to allow customers to not only transfer, but also remove third-party data. So we do have a handful of customers that are using CDA Plus today. Again, if you know you need to remove that third-party data out of your production company, CDA Plus would be fit for you. So if there's anybody interested in that, certainly feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to provide more information around CDA Plus. Now at this time, when you wanna kick off that archive, you're gonna click process here. It is gonna remind you to do a backup process just in case anything happens with the system. At this time, this process will enable the pause and resume buttons when you're archiving the payables and receivables data. Now below this pause and resume button, it's gonna give you an estimated time remaining for that archive. And it's also gonna tell you the number of blocks of customers or vendors that have been archived as well. So I'm gonna to touch on a couple of those things in the registration window as well. But before I do that, just a couple of recommendations here when running the archive. Number one, we do recommend running this process during your off-peak business hours because it does take up a large amount of resources from SQL to run this process. And number two, we do recommend that users are logged out of GP during the archive process as well. So for example here, let's say you start that archive on a weekday night, let that process run overnight, return the next day and see the archive hasn't finished yet. You can pause that archive, allow your users to resume their regular GP activity, and then resume the archive later that evening. We actually see a lot of our customers run the archive on the weekend, giving them that 48 hour plus period to let the archive finish. And as I mentioned earlier, we also have a newer feature called Company Data Archive Schedule. That's going to allow you to essentially automate this archive process. So we're gonna to touch on that here shortly. But before we do that, just one more feature I wanna drill into here from the archiving window, and that's a history log of all the archives you've run. So up here in the destination company, if you drill into this expansion arrow, it's gonna pull open your archive log, showing you all the past archives you've run, when it started, completed, the duration, you can see the core modules you selected, and your other archiving options. Now please note, you will need system administrator or DynSA rights to perform an archive. And then we've also included this details tab here at the bottom, which you can drill into and show your activity tracking, essentially showing you the number of records that were transferred and or removed during that archive process. All right, everyone, so that is going to wrap up the main archiving window here. And as I previously mentioned, I wanna hop right back into these other two features here, starting with the company data archive registration window. As you can see, we do have some other archiving options inside of here. First and foremost, this checkbox option that would allow you to remove data without transferring. So essentially just purely deleting data. So again, by default, we do not allow users to do that. But every now and then we do get customers who reach out to us, typically those who have been using the product for several years or those who are at least comfortable with the archiving process. We do get that request every now and then to be able to purely delete or purge data. So this checkbox option would allow you to do that. Above that here, we can set a minimum cutoff date. So if you know that you don't want anything touched or archived in let's say your most current two, three, four years, you can set that minimum cutoff date there. And then at the bottom here, we can change the number of customers or vendors per SQL transaction. But two things to note if you plan on changing this block size. Number one, the larger the block size, the faster your archive will perform. Number two, the larger the block size, the longer it could take to pause your archiving process if you need to stop it for any reason. So just know when you're archiving those payables or receivables, the tool will need to complete the current block of customers or vendors it's archiving before that process can be paused. 
next year then we have that scheduled archive feature so this is essentially an automation process for your archives so this function is very similar to the actual archiving window itself but as you can see it's a little more condensed so what you can do is you can actually set a fixed cutoff date here just like a normal archive or you can set this to a rolling date and that would essentially allow you to keep a specific amount of data in your production company at all times now, the document date GL posting date that's functioning the same we can still print that detailed report you can see here we picked the five most popular modules for this feature here we certainly hope to expand on this in the future but it is a relatively new feature here for us but this function is the same as well just transferring and removing that data now the difference here is we're setting this archive in advance so you can see here we have a start and stop time or resume and pause time now you can also run this through the weekend if you'd like to but how this works is let's say you get in on a Friday and you have to leave by noon so all of your users are still going to be logged into GP at least till about 6 p.m. so you queue up this archive to start at 6 p.m. run through the weekend and then pause at 7 a.m. on Monday before users get logged in. All you have to do is hit this Q archive button. In the past, you would have had to actually wait around for users to get logged out of GP before you could start that archive process. No longer have to wait for that. Again, you just have to queue up this archive in advance and set a start and stop time. All right, everyone, so just a few more features here that I wanna show you, but they do make more sense to show you from my live company. So just bear with me for a second while we switch over to that. So what we've done here is we've built what we call a cross company inquiry window for the payables and receivables. And these are useful for locating documents when your user doesn't know if it's in the live company or if it's in the archive company. So to drill into that, we go into inquiry, sales, transaction by customer. Now that's just going to pull open a core receivables transaction inquiry window here. So that's core GP. But under this additional drop down, we have a very similar type window that includes the archive documents. So what do I mean by similar here? I'm just going to pull these two windows side by side here. And you can see they essentially look the same, showing you that work, open, and history. But again, this additional drop-down window here is going to include the archive documents. So your user just needs to drill into this archive company ID so it knows which company it's looking into. Lastly here, I got two additional database maintenance features that come with Company Data Archive as well. First feature we have here is called a pre and post archive tool. Now what this does, it goes through and runs a report on SQL index fragmentation. So let me just expand this for everyone here and process that. Now you can see here some of my indexes need to be reorganized. Some of them even need to be rebuilt. So based on this report here, we can generate a Microsoft recommended SQL script to optimize these indexes. Now let me show everyone what that script might look like as well. So here is that Microsoft recommended SQL script here. Essentially, I could just copy and paste this into SQL Management Studio and run that to optimize those indexes. Otherwise, as you may have seen here from that main window, we also have the option to email the SQL script. So maybe we forward that to a database administrator and have them execute the script. The reason we're calling it the pre and post archive tool is we recommend running it pre archive for your best archive performance and then run it again post archive for your best daily operation performance. Since you're likely going to be changing the content of your database quite drastically after running that process. Last feature here, everyone, then, is going to be this SQL and Dynamics GP diagnostics. Please note these are purely informational, so it's not actually going to repair anything inside of your database. But you can actually select any of these diagnostics here and run that for your database. I'm going to go ahead and choose to mark all just so everybody has a better idea of how this works. Go ahead and process that. And then it's going to tell you here, based on what it's looking for, whether your database meets Microsoft recommendation, if it needs to be determined or if it does not meet the recommendation and then we can drill into any of these diagnostics here reviewing that description review the database results and then we've also included this Microsoft documentation tab here at the bottom 
which you have quick access to for more details. So that being said, everyone, that does wrap up today's Company Data Archive demonstration. So thank you all for taking the time out of your day to view Company Data Archive. I do appreciate that and looking forward to speaking with you soon.